All right, I guess I'm recording now. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to give everybody a quick little look at what I'm building now. And uh, this little sucker right here, I'll be careful with it because it's not finished. Uh, I'm using T-304 plates, the actual cells. Uh, really close plate spacing, about 25 thousandths of an inch, but the only thing I've used in between each cell set was a little strip of neoprene, 30 second of an inch or so, actually it's a little less. And uh, in between each cell, to make individual cells, use this sheet of uh, Hyplon. I gotta be careful with this thing because I don't have it secured yet. And these little magnets, i show them in view. These magnets on the end of it, it's about the only thing that's holding it together right now, but each one of these suckers is rated at uh, 290 pounds, about 13,000 gauss. And they're very, very strong. And I gotta be very careful with them. Because uh, they do pull pretty damn hard. And uh, I'll show you some more close ups if I can. Uh, if the plates are uneven or anything, it's no biggie because I just straighten everything out when I go to uh, encase it. And I'm not going to worry about cleaning the cells or nothing like that because uh, or taking, having to take it back apart and clean it because uh, I never seem to have that problem, not after the conditioning process. And you see how I got it kind of sandwiched up. And you see, when I did that test that I talked about on water car forum, these grooves right here, that was the only way I was uh, supplying current to these plates at that time, just testing it out, because I wanted to make sure it was worth building. You know, I could put a lot of time and effort in these suckers. And uh, I added five cells to it since then, so this sucker might actually draw closer to 100 amps now. But the amount of gas that I can get something like this to produce will make a flare off the top of a five-gallon bucket. Continuous flare. You know, I get loud explosions, went deaf for a little while. But, uh, you know, all the running mill crap. But, uh, let's see, let me zoom in here. But it's not too bad seeing, you can actually see in between the plates right now. Yeah, this is unconditioned, and I'm going to coat the end of it. The whole, all these ends, I'm going to make electrical connections on each one of these. I'm not sure if I'm going to weld it yet, or if I'm going to use the spade connectors. It's all going to be encased in epoxy, and it's this uh, a watertight uh, compound, potting slash casting compound, whatever, that I found on eBay that I'm going to use to do it. That's an update on the way I got that. And uh, each one of those cells, uh, the surface area on the inside of the cell is probably more like about seven and a half, seven inches by... I don't know, a little under three. These are plates I reused from an old 50 cell back about two years ago. I had hooked a modified alternator. And uh, I talk about it once in a while. And uh, I tried to do some winding on these, but I was trying to follow a little schematic posted by H2O Power a while back, a couple years ago. And it caused the windings in the alternator overheat real bad, so I shut it back down. And it might just be because I'm using different type of stator here. But uh, based on some deductive reasoning, I'm going to reposition a couple of these connections here and try to use it as a current limiter. And uh, out of all my junk, other projects, I just brought them out in the open so I can just show them real easy. This right here is 26 gauge uh, T316. And what I'm going to do is roll it up like a spiral cell. And you can see how I made the connections on the end. There's going to be a lot more uh, sealed up, pretty much watertight and everything, other than where I want the electrical current, the negative and positive, where I want that. Excuse me, I stutter a lot, so I'm trying to talk here. And in between these uh, plates, there's 6 inches by 48 inches are going to be the neoprene uh, spacers. This is going to be one continuous long spacer I can easily roll up. And I'm building something to roll them suckers up right now. It's going to be like a little clamping device that'll hold it down tight as I'm rolling it. So I can stop and take a break if I need to because it's hard. Some of you probably recognize that old motor. One of the geats I built. Yeah, I don't really, I rarely ever use it. I quit needing a sucker. 
tend to, I got better plans. A little smog pump I used to use. Um, these one of Chrysler alternators. I tapped into the uh, stator windings right as where they come out, but it's still by configuration, and I kept it that way on purpose. And uh, I'm gonna try a phase relationship in between these threes, maybe, or I may take it back apart and do it like one of the Stanley Mars uh, schematics, where basically each winding of the three is separate, so you got a neutral. Actually, they won't be tied together, so. So thus, it'll make sharper pulses. It won't be such a smooth DC because I want the collapse in the inductors I'm gonna build. And this little sucker is something I put together a while back when I was toying around with it on my geek reactor, my large one. And uh, I converted an L-head L -head engine Briggs and Stratton, I do believe, it might be a Tecumseh, and uh, it's an air compressor. Well, oh, been sitting in the water for a while. <laughs> but it does work. Using those breaths. Yeah, you can probably hear it. I got pretty good sound on this camera, so. Okay, there's one thing working on. And <laughs> I bought this old green car over here for the sole purpose of building a machine. I may not sound very smart, but boy, I can put stuff together when I want to. And I'm gonna use the front end off of this car for my gravity powered machine. It's an old burnout vehicle. But uh, the CV axles, I'll be able to use as an output shaft. And they are still good. And in between the two front spindles on here is where I'm gonna build my gravity machine. My I-beams are gonna be uh, welded right here on the upper, on one side and run directly across from each other so I can get in there and remove the whole system from the spindles and grease bearings later on. And uh, I have some whole heavy iron I'm gonna use to shift the weights and I'm gonna combine principles of both the G-Force rotational machine, I think, by Kara Green Ener Energy. Use principles of that to shift the weights of a design that is similar to Robert Costa gravity, mechanical gravity engine, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I got this whole mobile home here. I've been slowly tearing apart. And what I'm going to use for the tracks and the main structure of the gravity engine are these items. Pretty heavy steel. That's what I'm going to use for the structure. And a lot of you probably say, oh, you know, this may not work or may not. Well, may not, but hell, it's fun to put it together in process anyways. You never know until you try it. Don't take someone's word for it, trust me. A lot of people just don't want to be open to it, I guess. And let's see here. What I'm using for the rollers to cut down on friction on the sliding weights are the caster wheels that are found on like large gates. I bought four of them off Amazon.com for about $11.50 a piece. And they're gonna work really well. They're four inches by two inches. You got a rating of 800 pounds to two on either weight. Should suffice. Connecting arm in between the two weights. But my most interesting thing, the other thing I'm working on right now, seems to be this sucker. And as you can tell, every single cell is isolated in the general reason, region of the cell next to it. So as long as you use fairly pure, uh, uh, I'm just going to say natural water. I don't like to use the term in pure water or nothing. It's uh, misguiding. And, uh, but the mineral deposits do have out inside the cell. You coat them. And I've used high current to uh, condition these cells and they seem to work pretty well. But you do get a lot of brown muck. And, uh, that's an update on everything. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about all I wanted to show. Um, I'm going to carry this inside of alternator, looks like. Uh, you can see the brushes. This is old, uh, I think it came off Mitsubishi. This was one of the old alternators I used to use. I had dismounted on my Ford Taurus for a while. 
I had that car in a couple, couple of years, and uh, I just hardwired the uh, brushes so I can send whatever voltage or manner I want to. And I had it cut out so I could easily uh, remove the diode pack from in behind there and pick everything outside its case. And here's the, uh, what they call rotor. And so I was wondering why said you want to get a frequency when using the diodes on this sucker, but it's pretty high frequency, actually, and it's real smooth DC. So we're kind of run the transformer off of it, at least a conventional transformer. Doesn't seem to work all that well. Unless on these on the stator here, you got the three individual phases on it, and you just use one phase for your AC, and then adjust RPM for voltage slash cycles or whatever. But it won't run most things. But it will run certain transformers, like a microwave oven transformer, which is going to be used in some of these projects. But these magnets are really strong. Improve it. As you can see, the bottom magnet on this setup, there's a pair of them, two inches wide, half inch thick, and four inches long. So, and the magnetic fields are a little, I don't know, it's through the thickness of the magnets, but when I put both magnets together, I kind of get opposite fields on either side that are opposite than the ones on the other end of the unit. And I'm going to stick that up there that that's about two and a half inches of board right there let me zoom out in this and uh, I'm gonna grab this sucker see ta da ta da well it holds that piece of middle iron pipe clip in there and there's nothing sticking so those are strong knot magnets trust me I got my finger stuck in between them and uh, they hurt for a long time, and I had a friend of mine, uh, he brought the magnets too close together, even after me warning them, and it tore off the big old chunk of skin off his flesh, so be careful with them suckers. Alright, that's it.